What's going on guys? Welcome to another episode of Smash JT. Carl Jobs and Mudahar from Subordinary Gamers got together and decided to release the full Discord call that they had with Gerard the Completionist because they weren't a big fan of the threats that they were getting from Gerard the Completionist when he basically inferred that he planned on suing them and moving forward with a lawsuit for defamation of character because they decided to cover this topic which kind of flies in the face of what they talked about on the Discord call, where Gerard knew that they were going to cover it and knew that this was coming, and he still had the audacity to threaten legal action. But we are going to just obviously talk about the story as it is, and it's a tough story, but, you know. Do you guys have a timeline, roughly, when it's coming out? Just because I want to be able, not to get ahead of it, but I want to be able to, like, how much time do I have to... to, to force the the organization to donate the money but regardless of all that in this video i want to go through some of the main points and takeaways that i had from the call and there was some stuff in this call that gerard said that was just so bad that there's no escaping this smash JT. hit that subscribe give me a like and check out smashjt.com i will link this article in the description going over my full thoughts from the leaked discord call from carl jobs and mudahar some ordinary gamers because they were pissed they trusted Gerard to do the right thing. They had this call. They gave him ample time leading up to the call to prepare the information. They knew that they were going to discuss things and Gerard still went into it clueless as anything and basically indicts himself for charity fraud. But beyond all that, they still gave him the shot to clear his name. They still gave him every out imaginable and he still found a way to screw the pooch i've listened to this entire call probably three times on double speed a couple times because it's long it's close to 45 minutes 50 minutes long and it's basically gerard just kind of begging for his life it's it's sad it's depressing it's weird and and most of all the biggest takeaway from everything that i got from this call was how gerard is so damn afraid there is a gigantic thing coming to claim my career and you all have to close down and find somewhere else to do i know this is shitty me to say this i'm not trying to ask for sympathy or anything but this kind of stuff he's afraid because he knows what's coming he knows at this juncture in time this is before the lid got blown off this is literally him having the information Gerard holding all the cards and a couple people questioning a tax return and that coming back to Gerard and he knows the gig is up already because he's not an idiot. As much as he wants to play one on this Discord call, I have a really hard time believing that Gerard is this stupid. I was made aware in 2021 where the, the, the money hadn't moved yet. Okay. And that's what made me go, that's not fucking cool. And that's what I got personally involved to move it. And... Did anyone? Uh, 2021, last year, 2022. So in that takeaway right there, Gerard is talking about how he learned about this in 2021 and then quickly corrects it. Well, eventually, 10 seconds later, saying uh, 2022. That's when he found out that the money wasn't donated. But then just like 30, 40 seconds later, he's talking about how they were in talks with these other places to get the money donated. And they knew that it hadn't been donated yet. So how did he not know the money wasn't donated in 2020? Like we're, I, that's why I was like, well, they're taking care of it, but nothing was ever brought to my attention. I just knew that conversations were happening between Alzheimer's Association of America, AFTD Foundation, um, UCSF started a new organization, I think called like Bluefin or Blue Group, which is like supposed to be their 501c um, part of their organization. So I know I have a paper trail of us talking to other organizations as early as 2020. 2020. Like, it doesn't make sense. Everything, the logic, the, the answers, they don't match up to the questions. And when you listen to one answer and you match it up with another answer, those don't match up either. And the entire case for his defense falls apart. The house of cards comes tumbling down right out of the gate. I gotta be honest, like, this was a hard listen because of how embarrassing it was for Gerard and how afraid he is. That's, again, I'm going to keep saying that throughout this because he is so afraid. He knows what's coming. The snowball has started rolling down the hill and it's only getting bigger and bigger before it finally hits and explodes and ruins everything. And to think, this could have all been avoided if he just had a professional PR team handle this situation 
from the get-go and try your best to dig out of this very questionable situation that you and your family have put yourselves in. Vito Comedy on Twitter said, Imagine if Open Hand had fired this email back to Carl and Muda initially. Thank you for your query about our fundraising operation. We are currently in the process of negotiating several restricted donations with our partners, which will ensure the charity funds go directly to dementia research rather than the unrelated causes and or general operational costs. Regrettably, the complexity of negotiating these donations has meant a delay in transferring our collected funds. However, we are confident we should be able to finalize all outstanding donations before end of year 2023, then just dump the money to a few different charities and walk away clean. Like, literally, that's all they had to do. Would they have faced follow-up questions? Perhaps. Probably people would have dug a little bit more, but at least it wouldn't get to this point where now everyone is just out to get Gerard because he has handled it so embarrassingly bad that it's gone to the point that people want him to fail, that they want to see his channel burn. They don't want him to have any kind of redemption arc because he has ruined any chance to try to make a comeback on this platform. And Gerard even says, Multiple times, whether it's in this call or on other videos, he's said plenty of times, it's, it's kind of like a cry for help. It's almost like he doesn't want YouTube to work. Like he wants to escape this reality that he's in, that he wants to get away from his channel because it's just too much for him. The pressure, he can't handle it. Never mind the 20 miles to feed that we all know about, but everything about it just screams that he fell into this position of success on his channel and it's the last thing the guy ever wanted to do in the first place. You know, I, I want to keep Indyland going in the sense of, of that, but after this, I, I just don't think I can do that anymore. Carl and Muda clearly approached this with considerable empathy and patience. Far more patience than I would have even had because I would have seen blood in the water right away with this because that's kind of how I can be with some stuff. When I see something so obvious, so pathetic, so he's clearly hiding something, I dive on it. I pounce like there's no tomorrow. But Muda and Carl played it so safe. Like, looking back at their original videos, their exposés, they were so like, hey, just want to let you guys know, these tax forms, they have never donated anything. And it's it's kind of weird for, for a guy that's always asking for donations and, and running his foundation and, and being a board member of it and, and talking about IndyLand and all these charities he supports. It's kind of weird. Just, we just... It's kind of weird. Like, that's really the point of their initial takes on that. And from that, Gerard the Completionist loses his mind. Like, he is backed into a corner and he starts coming out swinging. Furthermore, my family and I are in serious conversations with our legal teams regarding next steps as the allegations that have been made have been made with complete disregard for the truth of the matter. These allegations were made by individuals who self-admittedly aren't even financial or legal professionals. These allegations are slanderous, and we believe we're done with selfish intent. They have directly jeopardized the safety of me, my staff, and my family, and that is not okay. Carl and Muda offered Gerard multiple opportunities to clarify his stance, coupled with constructive advice on how to amend the situation. They were literally like trying to help him. They were guiding him. They weren't even doing like a good cop, bad cop. I mean, I guess kind of Muda was the good cop and Carl was the bad cop, but it didn't even come across like that. They were both like, hey, bro, like, what's up with this? Like, it's really strange and it doesn't look good. Like, could you provide maybe an answer for it? And if not, maybe, I don't know, donate the money and come up with an answer? And he couldn't even do that. Like, they donate the money. Yes, after plenty of pressure eventually gets put on him, their foundation finally donates $600,000. But he doesn't have a good reason for it, talking about, oh, they needed a chunk amount of money to do it, and they were saving up for it, but yet they had this amount of money for the past two years, and and now all of a sudden, when all the pressure comes there, it now just magically is the perfect amount? No! Like, clearly, nothing matches up with this. Yeah. But we are going to just obviously talk about the story as it is, and it's a tough story, but, you know, 
I think it's. Uh, do, you, you know. do you guys have a timeline roughly when it's coming out? Just because I want to be able not to get ahead of it, but I want to be able to like, how much time do I have to 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 force the the organization to donate the money and to because like this isn't just a matter of like donate the money and be done. Like I, I'm gonna resign myself of Indie Land and and dissolve the event and 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 walk away from all of it. And I don't mean to keep harping on his legal threats, but I gotta say, like, of all the quasi-attempts at an apology video that I've seen in my time on YouTube, this has got to be the most audacious, the most ridiculous, the most out-of-touch apology quasi-attempt at, at trying to become shown innocent. Like, none of it made sense. But then to threaten Carl and Muda with legal action... After these guys, they weren't even pretending to be your friend. They were just being real. They were just being human with you. Like, bro, this doesn't look good. Here's what you should probably do. And try to come up with a reason why. Because otherwise, it's done. You're over. Your career is completed. Like, do something. But, uh, you know, we'll get back. And if we need any other comment or something, then, yeah, we'll talk to you. Yeah, about I mean, it. I think, but, yeah, yeah man, if you do want to, yeah. if you want to write something, write something. If there's any updates on your end, let us know. You know, so just keep in touch. Yeah, and honestly, cool. I, I really do. I just want to, before we end this call, I really do think that because of the circumstances, yeah, it's, in my opinion, pretty unethical. But again, the very big silver lining is the money is there, according to every PP filing that I've seen. It can be, it can all be like done right. You know, this is, this, this isn't a situation of actual embezzlement or, you know, money being moved to the fucking Cayman Islands or some cryptocurrency offshore. This is a situation that can be rectified for very, for, you know, for very positive sakes. But yeah. The other thing was how he handled the legal stuff. It seemed to prioritize legal liability over the public perception. Like he cared more about what it looked like in the eyes of the law legally, which I get because he doesn't want to go to jail, but when he's tiptoeing around everything, when he's like, oh, this is above board, and oh, we made sure because this is legal, and, and he's using words all like, oh, we made sure to be legal with it. It's like, dude, just be real. Like, you're running this foundation. The people that you're talking to aren't the IRS. They're literally viewers on YouTube that love your stuff and they just want to know what the hell's happening. They don't want someone tiptoeing a legal line. They just want someone to say, hey, yeah, we kind of screwed up and I'm really sorry about that and we'll fix it. Thanks to Carl, thanks to Buddha, and we'll move on with our lives. Like, that's literally as easy as it could have been. But the pooch has been screwed beyond recognition. Sure. Um, before, before I let you guys go, um... I, I just want to reiterate if you could just keep keep the family stuff to a minimum of like this this topic the, the dementia stuff it's it's not that easy it's never been easy and it's very personal and that's why this whole thing um, has been so I'm difficult. keeping it to the charity but again I'm going back to the fear he's so afraid and all his responses the just I feel like Carl and Muda handled it Beyond professionally, like, I was impressed. These guys were, like, top-tier pros all the way. It wasn't weird. It wasn't low-tier. It wasn't... They weren't, like, kicking him while he was down. They weren't unprofessional. They were super high-quality, high-level, high-alert, and thinking of possible things, possible scenarios, what the public perception is. Carl especially took some angles of like, no, bro, I'm not forgiving you because this looks bad. Like, you need to talk about this. No, I, I definitely uh, feel for you, though. You know, no, I'm, I'm... For sure, I mean, this is a big civil thing. Yeah. It's obviously not, not, a, not a good situation, but... Uh... but um... I take I take it that you guys are dead set on on making pieces about this. I mean, I, I yeah, I uh, I'm definitely covering this. Uh, I know Carl is, and if Carl is, I am as well too. I still can't grasp how Gerard thought that this call was a good idea. Maybe the only angle I could think of, the only perspective of why I think Gerard would do this call in the first place, is because maybe maybe it's like the cute girls, you know. They're so used to everyone saying yes to them. 
about whatever they talk about because they're so pretty. Like Gerard, he's so powerful on YouTube and his little group and his groupies and the people that follow him and, and his, his company, the completionist and all 20 miles he has to feed. People respected him in the past tense, he was someone that a lot of people looked up to. And I get the sense that he got used to people just kissing his feet wherever he walked, just kissing the ground he walked on and, and just telling him how amazing he is. And he probably thought going into this phone call that it was just going to be more of the same. Like, all right, yeah, I'll handle this because I'm me. I, I can figure this out. They, these guys, they'll, they'll, they'll understand. I'm, I'm Gerard the Completionist. I'm a big deal. You know, it's, it's cool. I'll, I'll play the sympathy card. I'll make sure to bring up my mother multiple times and how, how awful it was that she passed from frontal temporal dementia and, and how that really affected my entire family's life. And I'll use my family as a shield and I'll, I'll make sure to mention that multiple times in the call. I want to make sure that these guys can't use anything uh, out of bounds on me. So it really limits the guide guidelines and the rails of what they can say. If I can, if I can just establish some rules of what they're allowed to talk about. Before, before I let you guys go, um, I, I just want to reiterate, if you could just keep, keep the family stuff to a minimum, of like this this topic the, the dementia stuff it's it's not that easy it's never been easy and it's very personal and that's why this whole thing has I'm, been so I'm keeping it to the charity and like the the money and why it hasn't moved I won't personally be mentioning anybody family related if that doesn't work then I'll talk about my employees and the miles I have to feed and and how this is going to just not just destroy my life and my image but oh my goodness if you guys follow through with this it's going to ruin 20 people's not just 20 people but they got families and they got mouths to feed like you're going to ruin everything so maybe you know just overlook this you guys are you, are you gonna are you gonna report on this and if you are what are you gonna say just so I just so I know how to how to handle it? I take I take it that you guys are dead set on on making pieces about this. The situation is a stark reminder of the importance of honesty and integrity, especially in matters involving public trust and charitable endeavors. Unfortunately, something like this, it tarnishes the image of everyone out there even the good guys even there's plenty of good youtubers out there that do their own fundraisers like i mentioned in a previous video uh, nerdy nick uh rocky castro the n2 squared podcast uh, uh gaming off the grid always does something for the children's hospital like there's there's so many good youtubers that do good stuff trustworthy stuff that when you give them your money you're you're entrusting that that's going to go to what they say it is directly, immediately, or at least shortly after you donate it to them. Not 10 plus years. Like, that's the thing I can't get over. The audacity of this guy. I, I, I keep going back to, he just, he just, Thinks he walked on air, that he he's a yes man. Everyone just says yes to him because he's just so amazing. He got so used to that that he felt like he could own any conversation. And when he knew that they had him by the balls, he was afraid. He was he was curled up in a corner. And, and then he made his apology video and he starts swinging because he has no idea how to handle the situation. At this point, Gerard has to say something. He has to. Like... He has been back so far into a corner and then stabbed himself multiple times unnecessarily when he could have just asked for sympathy and be done with it. He has to go on the offensive and completely ruin his image. Like, it's so embarrassingly bad how he handled it that now not only does he have to apologize for everything he did wrong initially, but he needs to also apologize for how he handled the previous apology video. And it's like inception for apology videos for this guy. And I don't know where it's going to end. But if this guy, if he does care to repair his image, which I genuinely question after doing my research on him, watching multiple videos, listening to this call multiple times, and just hearing in his voice that... It doesn't even feel like he has the passion to do YouTube. Like, he is completely burnt out from this lifestyle. And he, he just wants out. Like, it's like the YouTube mob. He wants out. And this is his way of getting out by doing something so completely awful and, 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 and inconceivable that people just write him off and then he's not allowed to come back 
ever again, a la Philip Mewson. Like, this is the kind of thing you do if you never want to see your face on YouTube ever again. There is no redemption from this, unless, like I said, he does an apology video properly. And that is going to be a tall order at this point. As far as it goes from here, that's the next step. Like, everything's on the table now. It started out with a couple snippets of the call, people reacting to it, and then he made his apology video, people reacted to it, and then leaked parts of the call come out that just blow people's mind, people react to that, and now the entire call comes out, and it's like, okay, everything's on the table, everything's been exposed, and now it's up to the completionist Gerard to actually say something and fix it himself and if he wants to fix his image he needs to do something but like i said i question if he even wants to and where it goes from here is anyone's guess but you guys know i'm gonna be glued to it just like you are so hit that subscribe stick to smash jt again check out the description for the link to this article i put a lot of work into this one uh, going through my entire feelings of the situation i write the articles to help me with these videos so that when i do them i'm not as all over the place as I would be without them. So use this as a framework for my video and, and it's really helpful just to, to know what I'm thinking about the situation because I feel like it gets at the insights of not just what Gerard said, but the psychological behind the scenes of how he said what he said. I'm gonna leave it there. Thank you guys so much for watching and as always, you stay smashing. Smash, Jay, smash, Jay.